What's up everybody, this is Barry Fishank and today I'm bringing you the first episode of Aquarium Marathon Week and um, I'm actually starting this week out with um, a long awaited salt water update video um, because I know a lot of you guys want to see on the salt water tank and it has actually been a really long time since I've made um, an update on this tank I actually think it has been like two months ago and the only salt water videos I've really been making was, um, you know, related to aquarium science videos. So, so here you guys go. Here's a little update on the salt water nano tank, the reef tank, um, and you can clearly see everything is doing really, really well. Um, you know, I did release an episode on on my new um, corkscrew anemone, um, also known as long tentacle anemone. Um, you can see here it's doing really well. Um, it's closed up a little bit right now because this big guy right here actually just went crazy in there. Oh, well, it's actually a girl, but you know, um, she went all crazy up there. So um, it kind of closed up a little bit down there in the bottom, as you can see. But it's it's looking really really nice. Um, really beautiful sea anemone. It doesn't really want to anchor itself anywhere, but it seems to be holding in place down there, which is fine with me. Um, uh, the rest of the saltwater tank, well, the senior has been spreading out like crazy. You can just see here. Um, this was actually where I had this rock originally, um, but I just moved it over because you can see um, senior already beginning to cover this um, area up pretty well. But you can see here in the middle, and um, this guy was not uh, for two weeks ago. It was about this tall, about this tall and it got this tall right now it's really really huge you can see it's just flowing through the um, through the water flow right here um, really nice really nice coral i really like the uh, the movement on seeing here they look really nice i'm probably going to make a care video um, in this marathon week for you guys you can also see they actually spread out over to my cholesteria which also has been growing like crazy um, and you can see here the Kenya trees are filling out very nicely um, I'm not really letting them, letting them spread that much um, you, you know there's a single Kenya tree down there um, there's a few small ones down there um, but it's not a lot because um, in my opinion I better like in a nano tank I would rather have a few Kenya trees that are really large and a lot of senior that are very small so you can see and um, you know I got like probably in total I probably have eight or ten Kenya trees in here where two of them two or three of them are pretty large um, and the rest are some pretty small ones that I just keep because I think they look pretty nice um, but you can see here senior are also spreading out over here like it's 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 incredible um, so they're doing really well in my tank um, and um, so also, the Dunkin' Coral, um, you know, this guy has been being closed off for quite some time, but you can see it's doing amazing right now. It's actually not even fully open yet. It's it's morning now, so it's not really fully open. Um, however, um, you know, it's doing really nicely. It's eating, it's it's growing. I think it has a total of 24 heads now, um, which is pretty impressive. Um, so that's nice. Um, and the frog spawn now I want when we come to the frog spawn I want to talk to you guys about um, salt and salinity because um, what happened recently was that um, since I apparently didn't um, replace enough evaporated water um, you know salinity kind of raised up and it was up at 1.028 or something like that, which is way too high. It should be at maximum 1.25 uh, or well 1.025 um, And sadly it went over that level um, But um, you know my Kenya trees my Dunkin' Coral my senior my anemone and even my cholesterol Were doing absolutely fine in that salinity level um, probably not for long, but it was doing pretty well Luckily, it was not for more than a couple of days that it was like that. Um, but I was I was wondering why did my frog spawn clo close up because it was closed up for like a couple of weeks, um, and I found out that was actually because of the salinity levels because now I actually lowered the salinity levels um, over a week period, um, 
And you can see the, the frog spawn is clearly enjoying it. It's opening up as usual, looking really nice. Nice coloration on there. And I'm going to probably feed it with some mice pretty soon. Um, you know, it's doing really well. Um, and you know, normally I do not really feed my corals. I do put a little bit of phytoplankton in here, like once every month or something like that. But that's only to supply my my soft corals. Um, and it seems to work really well, actually. Um, a little bit of um, marine snow for my Kenya trees and for my senior. Um, I don't really go down and dose it. I just put a little bit into the water, and it kind of flows around naturally. They'll catch it. Um, you know, they're pretty much in like 50% of the tank, so. Um, anyway, uh, you know, the frog spawn is doing really nice, it's coming out nicely, which is very nice to see. Um, and I also actually recently changed my salt, so I do not have the same salt I put in here. Well, I, I still do have a little bit of reef crystals from, from aquarium systems, um, but they actually closed down their... Um, they, they don't sell reef crystal salt anymore as long as I know, at least not, at least not here in Denmark um, because there's a, there's been a lot of complaints about some, some reef aquariums here in Denmark who actually got um, a mixture of reef crystals and whenever they put it into their tank um, you know the water started widening up like it, was, it would get all white and cloudy um, and everything would just start dying after like three hours um, which has never happened to me, you know, I've, I've had great success with the salt um, but do bear in mind when you get um, like a, a huge box filled of sand uh, no, not sand, salt um, it's a good idea to mix it around or at least shake it so that the salt, you're sure that the salt and all the different tr trace elements are mixed well together because sometimes they just put it in layers in there I've actually heard of some salt brands that do that um, so you have to um, to shake it and things like that to mix it up um, and sometimes you know they mix it in these big tanks these big um, sort of um, barrels uh, you know and, and when the mixer goes around sometimes it doesn't get uh, like if they put for example some magnesium some calcium you know some different things like that some maybe some iodine um, you know strontium things like that they put that down in there and what sometimes can happen is that there might be one big clump of magnesium and they might get an unlucky batch and you know get um, all that magnesium with and clearly putting a lot of magnesium into your tank like you would do a water change or something like that it would go completely crazy everything would just die off um, and I think the, the case here was probably calcium since it widened up and all the SPS calls died and wind, widened up really quickly so you know, um, but they got another salt that is called um, Instant Ocean. It's it's pretty similar to the, the salt that Instant Ocean makes, I would say. Um, but it's still made for reef, um, you know, reef aquariums. So um, I'm just gradually mixing the salt together uh, over time because I still have a little bit of reef crystal salt. Um, and it seems to be doing very nicely because I did a water change probably like three, three days ago. Um, I did a 15% water change um, to just get everything r uh, running, you know. Um, so let's get to the fish. Um, actually, I do not have a Scarlet Scum cleaner shrimp anymore. Um, uh, I was on vacation in Spain for one week and I actually let my grandpa, um, um, you know, uh, take care of my tanks. He actually did a really good job. Um, he has done it before and he's actually really good at it, which I'm really surprised for. He's actually really, really good at it. Um, but uh, anyways, um, the saltwater tank when I came home, it looked really nice, you know, um, I, I came home for about, I actually came home last Thursday, um, so everything was looking really, really nice, but um, I couldn't find my skull gun cream shrimp, but I don't think that's my grandpa's fault, I just think it's because it's actually a really old shrimp, and when I got it, I think it was a couple of years old, and I've had it for a year now, so... It was getting really, really large, um, but it died off, so I'm probably going to get... Uh, I'm, I really want to try cardinal shrimp on emerald crab, but I'll see about that. Um, hopefully I can get an emerald crab. I can't find any emerald crabs in my area. That's really... it really sucks. Um, but anyway, uh, the, the fish are doing really well, though. Um, you know, the claggy clownfish are looking very nice. Um, my claggy clownfish female right here, she's getting really big. She, she grows almost every day. Um, my male is still staying small, but still growing. Um, my yellow tank is doing really nice. 
You can see he's just swimming around normally. Um, he's just chilling. I fe I fed him with some seaweed yesterday, and also when I scrape my glass for algae, he usually likes to eat the flakes that come off. Um, I also feed him with some uh, some spirulina pellets and things like that, so he's doing really nice. Um, actually, also spirulina flake food and and stuff like that. So. Um, my six line brass is doing really nice too. Um, he's actually getting quite huge. Um, I didn't know they would get larger than this, but apparently they grow a little bit more. Um, he's just chilling around. My blue damselfish has been fighting a little bit with my claggy clownfish. Um, not really to the extreme, but you know he's he's an aggressive uh, aggressive fish. He's not he's not aggressive as such. I would say he's more territorial than aggressive. Um, you know. Um, but yeah, he actually had a huge wound on the side of his body because one of the clownfish decided to bite him. Um, but he, he seems to be doing uh, fine now. There's no more wounds on him, which just shows that my fish are healthy. I'm really happy for that. Um, he's still keeping his territory down here. Um, you know, so everything is looking really nice with the territories and things like that. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this first episode of Aquarium Marathon Week and stay tuned for six more videos. There are going to be two more saltwater videos, three more freshwater videos and an aquarium science video um, to end it all up. Or wrap it all up, I guess you can say. Um, so yeah, tomorrow will be a freshwater video, so freshwater people stay tuned. And yeah, see you guys in another video.